YouTube was it going the goat house is back and with the video that everyone's been waiting for the most intriguing part of this 2020 NFL draft the receivers I'm breaking down 20 in this video and ranking them uh, if you want full rankings and the graphics of these videos uh, you could check out those links in the description for either our Patreon or become a member of the Goat House. Either of those will get you access to all of that, including the full rankings. Full NFL draft coverage here at the Goat House, and we'll actually have a few live streams leading up to the draft uh, with Q&As and more covering the draft. And we'll be live during the draft, April 23rd, instant reaction, predictions, all of it. Uh, so hopefully you can join us right here on YouTube for that. Subscribe to both of our channels. You'll find a link down below for that plus channel. We're trying to reach 50K by the draft. Follow our Twitter, uh, Fan Vote and Mock Draft, always talking the NFL draft, breaking down prospects, answering any questions. That's a must-follow link down below, as well as our podcast, Apple, Spotify. We're on it. Seven episodes out. Really enjoying making that with the boys. Let's go over to see who tops the categories for the receivers, in my opinion. Uh, day one impact. Who Who's going to make the biggest impact right away? Went with Jerry Judy. It's going to be pretty easy for him to make an impact because you know his, his game is getting open and you know how it should be so simple to plug in him in and just he's going to get open just get the open receiver the ball he's got to catch the ball of course uh, but also that he played he mainly played outside but he played pretty close to 50 50 in terms of outside in the slot so um, that is uh, you know throughout his career actually but this year played a lot in the slot but pretty close to 50 50 uh, you know, for the most part, so that that helps him right away. You could put Henry Ruggs in that spot too, because speed just translates so easy for teams. It's going to be so easy to plug guys in like Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs to any offense, and they're going to be able to make an impact. Uh, hands, what well, with C.D. Lamb here? And if you go by the numbers, how many drops the guys had, how many cat targets they had, uh, maybe it's not C.D. Lamb in that in that way. You know, it's Isaiah Hodgins probably up there. Uh, James Prochet, you know, guys like that are up there. Uh, but for NFL hands, the big time catches, and he does have great hands. He doesn't really drop the ball. The the one against LSU haunt me a little bit at the end of the the semifinal game. But uh, yeah, C.D. Lamb, I think, will be known from this class for having maybe the best hands out of the group. Uh, speed, pretty clear. Uh, from the combine, but mainly from the tape. They match up. Henry Ruggs wins the speed. Contested catches. A lot of guys that can go here. Uh, a lot of guys. You know, really a battle between T. Higgins, Denzel Mims, and Chase Claypool. Went with T. Higgins uh, because he, he has more of those catches. Surprisingly, actually, he has more of those catches that really you think the DB should win that rep. You know, why I say that's surprising is because he does have an, a phenomenal quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. But, uh, yeah, sometimes the ball a little underthrown, and he'll just snatch it right from the defensive back really it just he had he has the best hands when it comes to contested catch uh which is which is crazy um so t higgins there deep i want denzel mims you can go you can go for speed here you can go for lambs pretty good deal i want denzel mims because he really dominates down the sideline deep he's really good at using his strength physicality to gain that last second separation and just fight off the defense back and win that battle. He also has the speed and the yeah, the length and extension to win there as well. So all that tells me Denzel Mims. The best true slot receiver is Justin Jefferson. He only played about like five reps outside this year. Uh, absolutely dominated the slot. He's today's style slot receiver, and that's where he kind of made his money this year. You know, improving from 2018 and 2019 was just dominating in the slot. So Justin Jefferson – Jefferson, to me, is the best true slot. Like we said, Jerry Judy can be a slot uh, and dominate there. Uh, about 50-50 for him. We've seen Lamb play in the slot a little bit, played pretty well there. Um, routes, definitely Jerry Judy. You know, there's some good route runners in this class. You know, routes slash separation, you got to go Jerry Judy. Uh, the Maybe the best of all time in terms of that category for a prospect. Upside, I went with Jalen Rager. And that's because he really has every part to his game. At the same time, you go back and watch the tape again, you know, with TCU, he had some pretty brutal quarterback plays. Quarterback didn't really give him much help. You know, he had these reps where he won. He dom not only won, dominated so many of them, and they will not show up anywhere. Like, if you're going to go watch highlights or if you're going to go be a stat watcher, those will not show up. He dominated so many of those reps. Um, so with a, even a decent quarterback, uh, you know, I think Rager takes a big jump up. The, the athleticism all around what he's able to do, um, you know, shows me he's going to be a ball player at the next level. Uh, sleeper, it was so hard to pick one sleeper. So hard. I had quite a few in my head. Went with John Hightower, you know, because sleeper is a guy that, you know, usually a sleeper is a guy that people are sleeping on. You know, he's underrated. People need to talk about 
lot of more. But the main reason, and there's a bunch of guys like that, the main reason I went high tower is because I also think he will go earlier than people think too. So that's why I went high tower. He ran the low four fours at the combine. He looks once he gets going, once he gets going downfield, he looks like he's really cruising even faster than that. Uh, ab- absolute deep threat, excellent deep threat. So he kind of was in consideration for that deep category. As well, and deep sleepers, Darnell Mooney from Tulane. He's pretty similar to Henry Ruggs. He's going to be the day three Henry Ruggs. He can fly for a three guy. Uh, and surprisingly, for a smaller size guy, you know, he can go up and catch the ball. He'll go up and take it from you, too. So that's a sneaky guy in, uh, in day three, probably late. Uh, to my rankings, number one is going to be – number one and number two are so close. I, I want CeeDee Lamb for one. You know, I never had this – you know, where it's one and two in a certain position group is just so close. I, you know, almost, I almost want to say tie. There's no such thing as ties for me, and I've never had that before, but it's it's that close, even though for different reasons. Um, you know, CeeDee Lamb, I, the grade is elite. Um, you know, it's for sure an elite grade. He's a top five in my big board when that rolls out. Uh, Going to make an instant impact as well, even though, you know, there's other receivers that may, may have a more of an impact right away. But CeeDee Lamb literally has everything, every single trait, every single category. He checks the box. Um, you know, there there isn't a flaw to his game. You know, he wish he was a yeah. I wish he had like the four four zero speed. He's still fast. Um, you know, everything can run routes. Excellent after the catch. Absolutely dominant. Yeah, he has the traits, the build, the you know the no flaws to become an elite NFL wide receiver. You know, you look at who's at the top of the NFL. Um, you know, it, pretty much everyone's in agreement. You know, it doesn't matter the order, but you got Julio Jones, you got Michael Thomas, and DeAndre Hopkins. Ceedee Lamb is that style receiver. Maybe he could add a little more strength to his game. He's very young still. He can do that. Uh, um, you know, he just has everything. It's that type of receiver that's going to dominate the NFL. And like I said, fills out every category at a very high high level. <clears throat> and then why you pass on him? The only reason, if you know, if you're uh, choosing uh, a receiver and you just feel a little more comfortable with Judy because he's able to get open, get separation, maybe you feel he fits a little better in your team. That's understandable. That's the beauty about about the top two here. Um, you know, <clears throat> taking Judy over C.D. Lamb. I'm not going to say you're wrong because I have Lamb one. Uh, that's the great thing here. So. Uh, yeah, that that's great. Uh, CD Lamb one, and then of course you get where I'm going here. Uh, I got Jerry Judy two. In the debate that I have with myself, I have this debate with myself that you know who's the top receiver, and CD Lamb has everything. Like I said, he has everything. He has the build of a future number one receiver. Uh, but Jerry Judy has what the game is today. You know, the number one thing for a receiver to have to be great is you know have that. Ability to run routes, but mainly to get the separation. And Judy may be uh, the best prospect in NFL history at that category. Um, so that's what makes him. That that's what makes him elite. You know, he 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 really is. He can step. You know, the thought part, the thought of he can step in there and he could be the toughest guy to actually stay with guard in the NFL. That's pretty crazy. You know, is there a corner? And corner is a very hard position to play to put on top of it. But is there a corner that can really man man up and stay with Jerry Judy? So that's that's the argument for him for one. But he's still elite. He's right there with C.D. Lamb. If you take Judy ahead of C.D. Lamb, you st- you're still a winner. Re- really are. So he's elite. Uh, wide teams can pass on him. He does have some drop. He doesn't have like a lot of drops. He doesn't have a problem dropping the ball. But he would have those big moments where that's that's a touchdown. Another one. That's a touchdown, and he somehow dropped it. You don't. Expecting to drop it, so those snuck up on him a little bit. Nothing major. If it was major, he wouldn't be two. He wouldn't have the elite grade, but that could be the difference maker in Ceedee Lamb versus Jerry Judy or maybe some of the other guys. Uh, number three, I actually have Denzel Mims. Number three, I got him top 15 on my board. Uh, final board isn't out yet. Could even be higher than that. I'm a big Denzel Mims fan. Um, you know, he, this guy has elite length. That's the first thing that stands out. But the next thing is that there are so many guys that have great length. So many guys every single year they have great length, but nobody uses it as much as Denzel Mims. Nobody knows how to take advantage of their length like Denzel Mims. Uh, And that's when... Uh, separating, we see him use it to his advantage, separating, you know, um, getting a little physical, fighting off cornerbacks without drawing the pass interference. Does a great job at that. And then using his length to catch it. So many balls caught at the highest point, the highest extension point, um, just snatches it out of the air, uh, just 
so perfectly, you know. Uh, yeah, the combination of pretty much everything till we talk about the length, the catch radius is ridiculous, and then the speed too, you know, being that fast, being able to just outrun a corner down the field and having that 4-3 speed, absolutely ridiculous. And, and I think, you know, we talked about those top three receivers in the NFL. They're the same style receivers. You know, look at the Julio Joneses. You look at the Michael Thomas, DeAndre Hopkins. They're the same style receivers. They're the same build receivers. I think Denzel Mims has that. You know, he's going to have a little more length than maybe some of those guys too. So uh, Mims, you know, and his quarterback play was a little poor at times. You know, I think people – Worry about the routes a little bit. I, you know, I don't, I don't have a problem with the routes. Yeah, I wish he would have ran more like unique routes, maybe. But, um, you know, I think the footwork within the route and the ability to get separation is definitely there. So I don't get what people are talking about there. Uh, really, the only thing is just at the line. Um, he's strong enough to deal with the press. Uh, you know, from physical corners, I think he just doesn't have anything unique about him that's gonna uh, throw the corner off. You know, it's pretty predictable his body movement and with his hand movement um, off the line, but he's still winning on those reps. You know, obviously where he's uh, so that's definitely something we, they can work on with him. But I really like Denzel Williams. I think he's a plug and play guy, and he had, like I said, he has the traits, the body to be something very, very special. So I want Mims three, three, four is very close. Uh, the top four really separate themselves. Uh, people talk about, and my number four is Henry Ruggs, but uh, people talk about we'll wait for a receiver because there's so many good ones. The top four, it is, it's a, there is so many great ones. It's a deep, deep class, the best class of all time. It's also the most elite class. The top four are in a class of their own, uh, and that's the beauty about the next group of receivers because if, if your team uh, decides to take receiver eight, we'll say, over your receiver five, they're still a winner. It's not a big deal. That's the beauty of this class. Uh, but the top four definitely do separate themselves. And Henry Ruggs, to me, I mean, he's got the speed. That's what you love. He's got more than speed, too. He, he can run routes, uh, very solid route runner. And uh, contested, cal- contested catch ability is better than you think. You see him go up and catch the ball. You know, for like a smaller, fast guy, you know, you would think he wouldn't have that much. And you would think, you know, maybe he'd be more of a slot receiver, but he does more than that. He's able to win outside. He's able to be pressed. So that's what stands out. Um, you know, maybe the reason he's four and not, in the top three, it's so close, too. There's really no, in my opinion, those top four are just, they're all, you're a winner if you get any of them. But, um, yeah, I, I really wish, and I think teams will view this view it like this, too. I really wish he, we saw more at the college level. You know, there were some games where you didn't see much of him at all. You know, he had only a couple targets, disappear sometimes, and there was really no domination. There'll be a play where, yeah, I mean, the speed is, just comes up, and it's absolutely dominance, but... Um, yeah, there, there's no dominant play, really. And the in the case for that is that there was so many. I mean, the, the, uh, being realistic, the Alabama probably has four, had four, two this year, uh, first round receivers out there. Um, so that takes away. But Judy was a guy that never really disappeared on us. You know, he was always. They always made sure they got him the ball. And I think there's a reason for that. So, um, yeah, that could scare teams because for some teams, the receiver must. You know, teams are hesitant taking receivers in the first round still, even though they're more they're part of today's game a little more, a lot more. But, uh, yeah, some teams will view it like he didn't dominate. That scares me. You know, he's a dominant – he has some dominant traits. You're basically – when you're taking him, you're basing everything off traits. Um, you know, the worry is, is he just a speed guy? I think he's more than that. That's why I grade him very highly. Uh, yeah, there's just maybe a little more risk with him than maybe the other three, slightly. Uh, number five for me, it gets really close, five through nine. Um, number five is Justin Jefferson from LSU, first round grade. So there we got five receivers with the first round grade so far, and we ain't even close to done yet. Um, I went through quarterbacks and running back position rankings. I only came out with two total first round grades, uh, but now the receivers really help in that case. Um, but yeah, I talked about it earlier. Justin Jefferson, the best true slot receiver in the class. That's great for a team looking for a dominant slot. There's some some guys that. Uh, you know, maybe weren't a slot type of slot receiver some years ago, but now they are, and they're they're absolutely dominating. Um, you know, the body c- control for Justin Jefferson is absolutely ridiculous. You know, at the point of the catch, uh, and he's a- excellent after the catch as well. You know, you see him how many how many yards he gets after the catch, uh, and he dominates zone coverages. You know, he he can read them, he figures out ways in but be- you know to get open in between them, uh, and that's where he made his money there. Uh, why teams can pass him? I mean, he does have some risk too. You know, it felt like a lot of plays were kind of just schemed, like we're just gonna get him the ball. He's gonna be wide open. He was wide open a lot. Um, and, and yeah, he maybe struggled. You know, 2018, he played outside a little more. Didn't do a whole bunch. Struggled against the stronger corners, against the press or outside. So you know, teams could be, 
you know, really the only the teams that are in the market for a slot receiver may be interested. They may be a little – I think he can be a good outside receiver, and I think he can handle press a little better. But, you know, those teams could be a little worried. But he's going to be a dominant player. If they use him right, he's going to be a dominant player at the end of the day. So he's receiver five. First round grade. Uh, six is going to be T. Higgins. First round grade. Uh, elite contested catcher. We talked about that. Uh, absolutely dominant uh, at the point of the catch, taking away from corners when you think the corners have the rep one. Uh, and I think he has that extra gear deep downfield. You know, he people talk about you know the lack of speed. I think the speed's there, but it mainly shows up. You know, once he's you know past the 25 yards downfield, he gets really going. So yeah, he's got some speed down there. He can get open down there for sure. Um, you know, whenever he went against a corner that just didn't have the physicality or just weren't that solid at press, but they weren't terrible really. They just could not match T. Higgins' strength and his con- in contested catchability. He absolutely just put on a clinic. Like he absolutely dominated. Look at the Virginia game that was the ACC championship game. It was. It looked like a Hall of Fame receiver going against high school cornerbacks. Like, it looked ridiculous. So, uh, he has those moments where it's just pure dominance. Let's just throw the ball up. He's going to just dominate. Um, so, he has those moments. Uh, you know, why teams may be lower on him, why they may pass on him. Um, you know, he, he'll make that, yeah, crazy, impossible catch. Looks like he has the best hands for contested catch moments. But then here, he doesn't have a drop problem. Doesn't Didn't drop the ball a whole bunch. Uh, but here and there, he'll just drop a, a real easy ball. You know, turn on the NC State game where he has those dominant moments. Like, this guy's just too dominant for the rest of the field. Uh, but then he dropped the touchdown. Uh, that was a pretty simple one. He he kind of earned the touchdown that play until he dropped it. And then he dropped a pretty easy slant that had, had a whole bunch of room after that. Those don't come up much, but that still kind of sticks with you. Uh, then he has speed deep downfield, but he kind of lacks the, the quickness, you know, early in the routes. So, uh, but at, he can be absolutely dominant at time, at times, and he has the traits and the build to be pretty damn good at the next level. Those those receivers that end up being top tier. Those those receivers end up the the traits that end up being top tier in the build, I should say. But then there's those traits that make that instant impact. That kind of splits up a lot of these receivers here. Number seven is Jalen Rager. I talked about upside with Jalen Rager. Uh, I, I think the production will absolutely skyrocket with even a decent quarterback. Uh, even a decent quarterback. There, I talked about it. There was so many reps where he not only won, he dominated with, with his, uh, you know, the move at the line, the, you know, the strength against the, the, against the corner, uh, the, but the speed, the, you know, the movement, the routes were beautiful. Just so many reps where he dominated, but that will go unnoticed because the quarterback could not hit him. So many of those, uh, more than anybody in this class. Uh, and he actually high points the ball perfectly. He's a very good contested catcher, uh, but the, when he le- he judges the ball perfectly. When he leaves the ground, he times it perfectly, and that's kind of underrated about him as well because you see him, he's just under six foot. He's a, he's kind of a, an athletic guy. Uh, you know, those guys who don't have that, well, he has it. So he's pretty similar to Henry Ruggs in a way. Uh, Henry Ruggs is going to have him with more speed, uh, but Rager's tape says more speed than what he ran. I think he ran 4.46, 4, 4.47 around there, which is still flying. Um, he's faster on the field. He's going to have more strength than a Henry Ruggs. Um, yeah, and he, he goes up and gets the ball, and I think he's a great separator as well. Uh, why pass on him? I talked about, yeah, the, the quarterback just continued to miss getting him the ball downfield, downfield. But then once in a while, they'll finally, he'll finally hit him, and he'll drop the ball, you know. So he has – it's not a major drop problem. He wouldn't be this high if it was. But, uh, yeah, there were some ones where you definitely expect him to catch it. But they're at the point where they couldn't really hit him downfield, even though he was open, that they just had to hand him the ball, give him a jet sweep, end around, uh, screen pass, because he was just that good. He's their best player. So I do really like Jalen Rager. The upside is ridiculous. Just get him with the right quarterback. I think almost any quarterback in the NFL will do the trick. Uh, number eight is going to be Brandon Ayuk, another first-round grade. I think the this many receivers are that good. Um, they really are, you know, the with Ayuk, uh, you know, he's a, he's a great athlete, pretty similar to Rager, um, great athlete. I think he's definitely faster than what he ran on the, in the combine, which was 4.50. He was disappointed with that. He definitely looks faster on tape for sure. Uh, he can read coverages too. He definitely can read coverages, realizes, um, you, you know, when, when the corner's about to sit and cover too and to change, change his route, um, really imp- impressed that way because you don't really expect the receivers to really be able to do that yet. 
Um, solid route runner, great footwork. Uh, you know, I think he has that length too. You know, he's right around six foot, maybe just under, but he has the length, the length of a guy that's like six four. It's ridiculous, and he's great after the catch. It's very hard to bring down. He has the vision, knows exactly where to go. Um, so he has all those traits. All those traits are ridiculous. Uh, it's just a big time playmaker at the next level. Um, you know, you just worry about him against the real physical corners. Uh, you know, kind of beating those guys. He has the moves at the line. It's just the guys get a hold of him before he, you know, tries to create. That could be the struggle. Um, but, and then a recent injury actually came up, but it's nothing It's nothing major. So he actually could drop. Somebody's going to, he's probably not going to go first round, but he has the first round talent. The other receivers are going to push him down. And maybe this the slight injury concern, maybe push him down as well. But that that's first round talent all day, even at the eighth receiver here. And uh, the ninth receiver Nine first-round grades for my receivers. That's where it finally stops. I have nine first-round grades. LaVisca Chenault really, uh, talent-wise, is better than number nine, uh, but I have moved him down quite a bit over the last few weeks, maybe a month, um, and, and that's why maybe he could drop a little bit too, the, the same reasons, the durability concerns, because he already had the durability concern. Second the season ended, or during the season, because Colorado used him a ridiculous amount, just a ridiculous amount. They used him at running back, you know, Wildcat, uh, you know, just got him the ball anyway, because he's by far their best player. Um, so the durability concerns were already there, and then he gets hurt at the combine, just running a 40, uh, and then he needs surgery now, so... That kind of makes it more of a problem, and it definitely dropped them down a bit. Uh, and then, yeah, he doesn't have the separation of some of these guys. You know, he can't get the, you know, out of, out of the top nine, you know, he, you know, it's him and T. Higgins maybe maybe towards the bottom. Not that they're, you know, that makes it sound like they're bad. Definitely not. They're just in terms of the other first-round guys. He's towards the bottom. It's not a huge concern because there's times where he looks like he's great at getting it. Uh, but, yeah, why I like him, this is a, this is a ball player. When, I, when you tell me LaVisca Chanel, the first thing I think is ball player. You get the ball in his hands. Uh, he's got excellent vision, uh, can can break tackles, run through guys. You know, he's getting that extra yard. If he needs that extra yard, he's getting it. That's a receiver we're talking about. I really think he could play running back. You know, he, he probably could play running back. He would get – he would for sure – if he was a running back right now, he would for sure get drafted – Probably even day two. Um, yeah, you're combining his strength because he's got a really strong build to him. He just fights off cornerbacks, and with his athleticism, what he does, um, you know, after the catch, and his, you know, he's faster than people think, faster than I guess he looks. Uh, that combination is pretty rare. Um, so I do, I really like Chanel. I really like, I like what he does when he has the ball in his hands. Uh, drop down a little bit because the injury concern, but that doesn't take away that he's still a first round talented, first round skilled player. Um, so nine. So we, my quarterbacks, running back video, we did both of those, a total of two first round grades. So I'm on the lower end, but then receivers, I got nine. That's what I got here. These guys are crazy talented. Will nine go in the first round? Absolutely not. But these are first round talents here. Uh, number 10, I got a second round grade. It's going to be Chase Claypool from Notre Dame. Um, just an absolute freak. I mean, you combine, you know, the size, athleticism. There's only a few that can match that in NFL history. You see him, you know, all of that compared, you know, it compares him to Julio Jones, Calvin Johnson, guys that are just one-of-a-kind guys. Uh, you know, maybe there's only a couple of them. So teams are going to want to work with this. On top of that, can't the next question is, can he play? Well, he can play. He's an elite contested catcher. I talked about who is the contested catcher king in this draft class. And right when I, you know, I, I, you, if you put that in my mind, contested catcher instantly, uh, it's a battle. Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind, a battle between T. Higgins, Denzel Mims, and Chase Claypool. You know, and you just throw the ball up. When Notre Dame had the fourth down, the third down, they just had to get something. Just throw the ball up to Chase Claypool, and he's coming down with it. Um, you know, a absolutely just showed dominance at, at times uh, in those types of moments. Uh, and then the fact that he can play just as good in the slot as outside, played both, you know, played a little more outside, but played both close to evenly. Uh, you know, that's pretty impressive, too. Uh, and that's where the, the tight end talk came in. You know, he is a receiver. I think the media kind of blew that up a little bit. But just the fact that you see this big of a guy playing in the slot, and there's a lot of new school offenses using tight ends in the slot, uh, that's what happened there. But he's a receiver that could probably play tight end because he's a, you know, freakish-sized dude. Um, you know, but that's... 
that's it's just a rare guy, and teams will like that. They'll want to work with that. Um, you know, why pass on him? Yeah, maybe he doesn't have the the quickness at the line, the abilities against press. You know, to to confuse them. It's not nothing new they're gonna see. Um, yeah, and the separation isn't with the top uh, the top nine nine guys there, but it's not it's not a bad thing. You know, uh, so Chase Claypool is my number ten. We're gonna see eleven through fifteen now. I got Van Jefferson eleven. Uh, slight injury concern. Didn't get to see him at the combine. An injury popped up and then had uh, had surgery, but he's going to be good to go. Um, you know, so maybe that bumps him down a little bit. He's an excellent route runner. He'll get open. He'll catch the ball. Just the you know the only problem with him is yeah the lack of dominance. Like you wish you saw a little more. And like you know he has a talent in him. Wish you saw a little more. Brian Edwards, I like a lot. This guy's a tank. This guy's a tank of a receiver. Uh, he's very underrated. Another one I thought of for my sleeper. Uh, I'm definitely going to be higher. I think I'm higher on him than most people. Um, but I think people see the size of him, and they just automatically think he's slow. But he's not slow. The guy can move. He's so good with his hands, fighting off uh, other you know corners at the line. Their hands, their arms, really good at swatting. Uh, you know, you know the the DBs out of the way there. Very good hands. Very good contested catcher. Uh, yeah, the the tank part comes into play after the catch. You see him run players over. Um, so this guy can play. He can play. Great hands. He was limited due to quarterback play as well. A couple quarterback changes for South Carolina over the years. Uh, KJ, KJ Hamler, 13. The speed, the separation, um, you know, the, the excitement, the, elect, the electrifying gameplay, I guess, wants, you, wants to make you put KJ Hamler a little higher. But he did have 12 drops, uh, you know, probably the biggest concern in terms of drops in this class and the first part of being a receiver is catch the ball so that hurts him a bit you know probably would be higher but I think 12 drops out of 90 or so uh, targets that that's a lot you know so they got we got to fix that but he's electrifying player um, so it, it's a tough one to rank because you got to catch the ball but yeah just could be so dominant you know could be a 4-2 guy we didn't get to see him run at the combine uh, John Hightower is my 14th receiver uh, this guy is a deep ball specialist he can do more than that though um, you know he's he's so fast you know we see him in the four, low four fours once he gets going he definitely looks like a four three guy he really gets going great hands just home run ability uh, I think he'll fit in and he'll play at a better level uh, with a better quarterback. Uh, Tyler Johnson's 15, kind of that new school type of slot receiver. You look at a guy like Chris Chris Godwin from Tampa Bay. Uh, I think that's what Johnson can be. He can play on the outside. He has the the hands, the extension, the the body to play on the outside, and he can and will do that. He's just going to dominate in the slot. People complain because he ran so many slants. That's all he ran in the slot. Uh, but at the same time, teams knew it was coming after a while, and they still couldn't stop it. Uh, you talk about domination at the college level. If you want that from the wide receiver position, you get that with Tyler Johnson. I think he has become a sleeper as well. Definitely a top 15 receiver. And, yeah, it's tough to even put him down at 15 because he's so good. You know, that just shows how good this class is. So round three great on him as well. Uh, and then next group of guys, Michael Pittman, round three for me, uh, 16th. I think maybe I'm a little lower on him than other people. You know, other people are starting to put him up close to 10 around there. I like Michael Pittman. I think I just like I just really like those other receivers. Uh, yeah, the, what Pittman is, yeah, he's dominant, contested catcher. He's got the great hands. Um, pretty solid for kind of his length. You, you expect him to go down a little easier. So after the catch, pretty solid. You know, it's pretty much a go or a comeback for the most part, and he's pretty damn good at those. Uh, wish I saw, you know, a little more of a route tree, but I do like him. It's just this receiver class is really good. Devin Duvernay, I think, will be a very, very safe pick in round four. Uh, he'll be a very good slot receiver. Um, you know, not – He's a good route runner because of his speed and the, the twitchiness, uh, but, yeah, not the craziest route runner. It might be pretty straightforward what he's going to run, but uh, he's got excellent hands, so you're just going to put him a slot, you're going to throw him the ball, and he can break some tackles after the catch, too, because he's built like a running back. Donovan Peoples-Jones, tough one to grade, too, because this quarterback would play was pretty, pretty bad. Um, but the combination of the athleticism, you know, strength, high point in the ball, that's that's pretty. Uh, I think a very underrated catch was his catch against Notre Dame where he was like almost on the ground and had to reach back and don't and keep in mind that was a downpour of a game, the downpour of the century, uh, you know, around there. So uh, that was impressive. Catches like those are impressive. Um, you know, it's it's just tough to tell. You know, I, I don't he, he didn't face a lot of press. Um, you know, how will he separate? So it's kind of the ones that are harder uh, to judge. Uh, but I think some of the other ones are safer picks. Uh, Prochet at 19, James Prochet. Um, we've seen him 50-50 playing the slot, play outside, so I think he can dominate either one. Uh, excellent hands, top-tier hands in this in this class. 
Uh, you know, can catch pretty much any ball, I feel like, at this point. Pretty good after the catch, knows how to get open. He's one of those guys that may not wow a lot of people. He's not going to wow tremendously. Uh, but he does everything right. He's going to get the job done at a pretty solid level. And then Colin Johnson, 20. It's so tough leaving some guys outside the top 20. And there's, but I got Colin Johnson. I think for a big guy, you know, what drops him down, but also what keeps him up at the same time is not running the combine 40 because, um, you know, you want to see the 40 from him to be sure to draft him. But at the same time, he, you know, he could have ran something bad, and now it's not in our head right now. Um, he's a pretty good route runner for a big guy, though. That's kind of what's keeping him up. You know, I thought he played pretty well against LSU. I thought both Texas receivers did. Um, you know, the stats may say that uh, Colin Johnson could have done more, but I thought he did pretty well on Fulton out there. Um, you know, so for a big guy to be able to run pretty good routes, pretty good footwork is what comes into play there is pretty impressive. So that's why he's there. But, I mean, outside the top 20, uh, I mean, there's so many guys that I like. I like Tristan Jackson from Syracuse. I like Gabriel Davis from UCF. I like, uh, I mean, Lynn Bowden almost seems like a running back at times. You know, what are you going to, it's a gadget player. Um, I talked about Deep Sleeper, Darnell Mooney I like, and there's going to be guys that I have full rankings available. Full rankings already out. Um, you get these graphics as well if you sign up and you see the full rankings early as long, along with other position groups early. Um so, yeah, tons of receivers on there, more than 20. Uh, so you either go to that link that says Patreon or you go to that link that says YouTube or become a member down there. Either one will get you access to that plus more, so check it out. Uh, and, but the, the full rankings for every position will be out for everybody. Uh, that will probably release to me on one page, probably going to release the day of the draft. So don't feel like you have to do that, but you do get a lot extra and early access things there. Uh, please subscribe to both of our channels. Please smash that like button. We really appreciate it. Post in the comments your receiver rankings. It's a very interesting topic, so post those down below. would really appreciate that. Uh, check out our Twitter. It's a must-follow. Check out the new podcast. That's going to do it for this one, though. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.